Sean Larson, she is the Curator of Conservation Research right here at the Seattle Aquarium. Sean's not only been studying sea otter genetics and endocrinology for 19 years, but she's also studied the genetics of six gill and seven gill sharks, leafy sea dragons, and octopuses. And you ready for her title? Sea otters. Let's talk about sea otters um, here at the Seattle Aquarium and some of the research that we've been doing over the years. And I just want to note that all the pictures you're going to see of the sea otters are animals that are currently in our collection or are animals that we had in our collection at one time. So sea otters are a cute and iconic species here at the Seattle Aquarium and around the world. Um, they're one of the smallest marine mammals. But they do not have a blubber layer like whales, dolphins, and seals and sea lions. So how do they stay warm in the cold Pacific waters that they live in? They have um, extremely thick fur, up to a million hairs per square inch in some areas of the body. And they actually blow air into that thick fur, and they, they swim around with a, basically a dry suit on so that their um, skin never touches the water. But because they're in cold water all the time, they also lose some of that um, heat to the environments. So they have a extremely high metabolic rate to stay warm in these waters. They have to eat up to 25% of their body weight every day just to stay warm. So sea otters um, historically range throughout the North Pacific Rim from Japan, Hokkaido over here, all the way throughout um, the coast of Russia and the Aleutian chain and all along the west coast of North America. Um, but because of that extremely thick fur that keeps them warm, they were hunted extensively during the fur trade from the 1700s to um, protection in 1911. By the time they were protected in, oops, in 1911, there were these scattered remnant groups indicated by the red stars. Before protection, it was estimated there were a couple hundred thousand sea otters that existed, and after um, the fur trade, they were uh, lost 99% of their numbers and um, it was estimated that about 1,000 sea otters were left throughout this whole range. A couple of those populations went extinct because there were just too few. So these red stars are what were the remnant populations that then provided the recovery for sea otters that exist today. And these are the, um, the lighter areas of the range. So sea otters today exist um, still along the Hokkaido range, um, Commander Islands, um, um, the Kamchitka Peninsula, all the way throughout the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula, and then um, small population off of California. But you'll notice this group that exists today off of South East Alaska and British Columbia and Washington isn't, doesn't have a red star next to it, so how did those animals get there? Well, they were translocated from Alaska in the 1960s and 70s to um, these areas in Southeast Alaska, British Columbia, and Washington, and that's why we have sea otters that exist today. So the Seattle Aquarium was interested in saying, well, what was the effect of the fur trade? So they lost 99% of their um, numbers. Um, so we wanted to look at genetic diversity before and after the fur trade. Just think if you had a room of 200 people, um, not this room, we probably have 70 people, but if, if we lost 99% of our numbers, did you think that we would retain the diversity that we have? No. So, and genetic diversity is important because we want to retain as much genetic diversity in populations as possible because that's what's going to be there to respond for, to environmental changes, new diseases, things like that. So, uh, what we did is we looked at sea otters before the fur trade by looking at um, sea otters that are now extinct by getting DNA samples from Native American um, midden remains and then compared that with sea otter samples that we collected um, today by uh, normal tagging collection um, procedures. We found that sea otters have lost significant genetic diversity due to the fur trade. Well, how much? Preferred trade genetic diversity was about 80%, which is typical for a mammalian population that hasn't been extirpated. After um, the fur trade, that was uh, from sea otter samples taken in the early 1990s, uh, we found a 45% diversity rate, which is significantly lower than 80%, obviously. So then there were the questions, um, were there negative effects from this loss? Um, and we're still looking into that. Um, there are uh, people that down in Davis that have looked at the MHC complex, the genetic diversity of that, which codes for an animal's response to diseases and found very low genetic diversity there as well. So it may be that these animals don't have enough um, diversity to respond to new, new diseases, but we're still looking into that. 
But things are looking up. New genetic data shows improvement. And recently, like I said, the 1990s data shows that average remnant sea otter populations had 41% diversity. Average translocated populations had 46%. And again, those translocated were taken from two, sometimes one population in Alaska, but at other, other locations like Southeast Alaska and Vancouver Island, they were um, founded by two distinct populations. So the new data um, that we just got a couple years ago found that they, their diversity has increased, oh my god, and 20%, uh, by 20%, so this is good news for, for sea otters, in only 20 years they increased their diversity by 20%, so we hope that this bodes well for the future. Thank you.